Hi everyone, welcome back to Linda Libra Luca. My name is Anne and I'm passionate about sharing beauty tips and tricks for people with more mature skin. And today's topic is going to focus on a skincare ingredient that has been around for yeah, kind of the last year and that has slowly made its way into my skincare routine too. And it's Bakugheol and yes, I had to Google how to pronounce that. But if you're interested in skincare at all, please make sure to subscribe. You'll find a ton of that here on this channel. First, what is Bakugheol? It's called the herbal alternative to Botox and I'm not going to go into detail on that because Botox is something you get injected, you will not find a topical alternative to this one no matter what, what marketing is going to tell you. And it's called the natural version of retinol or the plant-based version of retinol because it comes from a plant, no surprises here, it's the Bapchi plant or Soralea cohelifolia. I'm going to stick with Bakshi plant. It is found in the seeds and in the leaves and it has been used in skincare, Chinese and Indian skincare for centuries. It works as a natural occurring antioxidant and has been found to have similar effects to retinol without having a structural resemblance to retinoids. Structural as in molecular structure. So let's first take a step back and take a quick glance, just really quick one, on what retinoids do in the skin. And first, retinoids is an umbrella term, there are different kinds. The strongest one is retinoic acid, which works over receptors, which is kind of the key, lock and key principle in the skin cells with gene upregulation and increase of collagen production and increase in cell turnover which leads to newer, firmer skin and lessened hyperpigmentation and can also help with acne. Over-the-counter products, which is not retinoic acid but the retinol and retinol aldehyde, are weaker but have proven to have similar effects to retinoic acid. The downside of using retinol is that it causes something like a retinol dermatitis, which means an inflammation of the skin, which happens usually in the first four weeks of treatment and can lead to some people not tolerating retinol at all or not tolerating high doses or frequent use because the skin gets dry, it can peel, it gets irritated, inflamed and very sensitive. This is strongest with retinoic acid, it is less strong with retinol and retinolehyde because they have to go through different steps in the skin until they reach the retinoic acid state where they can start to work so they are naturally less effective. Bakugio now has no, as I mentioned, structural resemblance. This, it means that the molecule of Bakugio looks completely different to the molecule of retinoic acid, which means that Bakugio does not exactly fit the retinoic acid receptors in the skin, but it still affects the, them and leads to the same upregulation in genes that increase collagen production. And that's actually not a really new scientific discovery. There have been studies in 2014 already that showed that in vitro, and in vitro means in the dish, in the laboratory. But recently, in 2018, there was an in vivo study, which means that it was tested on living people. And they took people and half of them used Bakugheol product and the other half used a retinol product for 12 weeks, applied morning and night, which I personally would not <laughs> recommend applying a retinol morning and night. That's kind of a lot. And they had a board certified dermatologist check and see if hyperpigmentation, wrinkle depth and all that increased. And they found after the course of the 12 weeks no significant difference. Both groups had the same increase in firmness, the same increase in elasticity, the same diminishing in fine lines and the same diminishing in hyperpigmentation, which sounds great. It was also noticeable that the group that used Bakugheol did report less irritation than the ones that retinoids. The important thing here is they reported less. Because if you read up on Bakugheol, they will tell you that it has absolutely no side effects. And that's not true. It just has less side effects. There were people that had irritation. There were people that had peeling. It just did not happen as often, which means it is better tolerable, but it's not the perfect product. You still have chance of reacting to Bakugheol the same way you react to 
retinol, but curiol has some other benefits. It's a very potent antioxidant. It is very anti-inflammatory, which can be great if you suffer from acne, because yeah, that's kind of a lot of inflammation going on in your skin, and it helps with reducing the side effects, and it is more stable. Retinoic acid and retinoids are very sensitive to light, which is why it's recommended to use them at night so you don't, they don't get UV exposure. Bacuriol is less susceptible to light, so you could technically use it in the day. Another benefit of bacuriol is that it is always vegan because it's plant-based. If you use retinoids, some of them can come from animal sources. Bacuriol has actually been used in skincare since 1970, but right now there are a ton of products coming up on the market triggered by this study. And a few examples are Ole Henriksen Retin Old Line, Omorovitsa Miracle Face Oil, which has been around for quite some time, Institutum Retin Oil, Ren Bio Retinoid Anti-Aging Cream. Kate Somerville has one too. So do I recommend that you throw all your retinoids out and just focus on Bakuriol? Not exactly. Why? Well, first of all, we have two studies one in vitro and one in vivo that show that this works as well. You have a ton of studies that proves that retinol, retinolehude and retinoic acid work great. That doesn't mean it does not work, but I'd kind of like to see more proof before I jump completely on the blind wagon. The second one is it is as effective. It's not better, it's not worse, it's just as effective in this study and they compared it to retinoids, over-the-counter products. They are weaker than retinoic acid. So if you use prescription-strength retinoic acid, you're not going to get the same effect of Bacuriol. Third one, it is less irritating, but it's not non-irritating. It's not a miracle product. So if you have been using retinal products for a long time now, and you have been happy with it, without irritation, without side effects, you can as well go on using it. There is no need to switch. This is a great product for people that are so sensitive due to numerous reasons that they can't use, can't get the benefits of a retinol. But don't throw away products that have been working for you just because one study is great and it's the new plant-based natural alternative or bio-retinoid as it's called in the media. This is uh, just marketing. Make an informed decision, see what works for you. So tell me in the comments below, have you heard about Bakuriol? Have you tempted to give it a go? Have you ever reacted with the retinol dermatitis with this horrible peeling effect? How did you cope with it? I'd love to chat with you in the comments and yeah, that's it for me. Make sure to like, subscribe and I'm going to see you all very soon with another video. Bye.